Well, shalom, shalom, everybody. Uh, this is a rebroadcast of our Tuesday night live stream, even though I'm not doing the live portion and we don't have the chat, but you were all here in the chat. And so uh, I thought I would go back and give justice to Yahweh's word. Uh, the scriptures are important to each and every one of us, and they're important to him also. They were important enough for him to write them. And he did write them, every, every last one. And the ones that he didn't write are just books collecting dust and causing confusion and controversy. But I am thankful for the scriptures that are canonical and uh, the scriptures that were canonical before the Catholic Church kicked them out and because they didn't line up with their doctrine. So we have a few extra books that uh, should be canonical books, uh, in my opinion, and in the opinion of many other believers. But uh, praise Abba for each and every one of you, and uh, those of you that drop by and visit. If you drop by and visit this time, you'll not only get to read the chat, well, you won't read the chat in this one, There's, there is no chat, but... Instead of just coming and reading the chat, you will be able to hear the word of Yahuwah. And uh, we are going to be reading tonight in the book of John, Yochanan, chapters 1 through 4, Abba Willing. And uh, before we get started, let's go ahead and get to the uh, reading screen. And let me share that with you. And before we get started reading, we want to go to Abba Father Yahweh in a sincere word of prayer. Abba, we're so grateful to you for the love that we feel. Your Ruach is so strong in every live stream that we have. And we know that Hashatan is also trying to get his foot in the door from time to time. But we're thankful to you that you give us privacy from him and many many ways in our mishpaka, in our fellowship, and in our chat. So we love you and we appreciate that. And Father, we're so thankful for all of our mishpaka. There are many and so many, that, in fact, that I, I needn't try to name them all. But there are many that needs help. And we're praying for their behalf, health-wise, uh, spiritually, um, as far as financially is concerned and family-wise is concerned. Uh, we have a, a number of different problems in our mishpaka, and Father, you understand each and every one, and we're thankful to you that you hear our, our prayers, and Father, that you answer, and you answer kindly to us because we love you and we praise you, and we want certainly to bring honor and esteem to your Kodesh name. So all that we pray we pray through Yeshua, in the name of all names, Yahuwah, our Elohim, Yahuwah, Echad. And the Mishpaka said, Amen, Amen. Well, let me bring the scriptures forward so I can see, and we will begin reading. Praise Abba for, for this, uh, this opportunity to share his word with each view, and who knows how many others that might just stumble upon this, uh, upon this reading, and just watch. <laughs> Chapters 1 through 4, and we're starting with chapter 1, in the beginning. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Elohim. And the word was Elohim. He was in the beginning with Elohim. All came to be through him. And without him, not even one came to be that came to be. So nothing was created without our Savior, Yeshua. Side by side in more ways than we know with our Father, Abba, Yahuwah, Elohim. In Him was life, 
and the life was the light of men. When he says, and the life was the light of the light of men, if you don't have that life, you don't have light. You're living in a world of darkness. So if Yeshua is not part of your life, he's not in your heart, by all means, ask him to come into your heart. Believe on him and trust in him because he will forgive you of your sins. And we all need forgiveness. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from Elohim whose name was Yochanan, and that's not the writer of this book, Yochanan the prophet, the forerunner of Yeshua. This one came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all might believe through him. He was not that light, but that he might bear witness of that light. He was the true light. Now he's speaking about uh, not Yochanan, but Yeshua. He was the true light, which enlightens every man coming into the world. He was in the world, which he was, and the world came to be through him, and the world did not know him. This is not the earth. We're talking about mankind, the world, mankind. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. He came to the Hebrews. They turned him away. But as many as received him, to them he gave the authority to become children of Elohim, to those believing in his name. Hallelujah. To those believing in his name who were born not of blood, nor of the desire of flesh, nor of the desire of man, but of Elohim, born of Ruach. Now, they were born, certainly, of blood. They were born, certainly, flesh, and within the desires of the flesh, and within the desires of man. But, most importantly, they were born again in the Ruach HaKodesh. And the Word became flesh and pitched His tent among us, and we saw His esteem, esteem as of and only brought forth of a Father, complete in favor and truth. I want to point out, Father here is not capitalized because it's not talking about the Father Yahweh. It's talking about the esteem that comes of being a father and having your own son, your own only brought forth of a father. And that would be having one son, not multiple, but just one. That's what uh, Abba had was one son. Yochanan bore witness of him and cried out, saying, this was he of whom I said, He who comes after me has become before me, because he was before me. He was eternal. Of course he was before him. He was not created. <laughs> he was creator. And out of his completeness, we all did receive the favor upon favor or and favor upon favor. For the Torah was given through Moshe. The favor and truth came through Yeshua, Messiah. Uh, notice that I spell Yeshua. It is spelled here in, as uh, Yod, Shin, Wal, Ayin. And that is the Aramaic spelling. And Yeshua was Aramaic. He grew up in an Aramaic town. Nazareth is an Aramaic town. They were mainly Aramaic. Uh, but if Yeshua was walking along the road, heard somebody speaking in Hebrew, naturally he would understand it because he speaks Hebrew as well. Hebrew and Aramaic are sister languages. 
and many, most of the words are in each of those languages. And, but sometimes they change the way that they present an idea or a thought. But anybody speaking Hebrew um, fluently would understand Aramaic. And anybody speaking Aramaic fluently would also understand Hebrew. Hebrew the most because Hebrew was what was taught in the temple. So everybody heard Hebrew on a regular basis. Okay, no one has ever seen Elohim, the only brought forth son who is in the bosom of the father, he did declare. Now this was the witness of Yochanan when the Yehudim sent from Jerusalem priests and Levites to ask him, Who are you? <laughs> and he confessed and did not deny but confessed, confessed is listed twice there, means it's a double importance. I am not the Messiah. That's what he confessed. And they asked him, Why then, or what then, are you Eliyahu? So he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. Therefore they said to him, who are you so that we give an answer to those who sent us, Pharisees? What do you say about yourself? He said, I am a voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of Yahuwah, as the prophet Yeshayahu said. And those sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him, saying, Why then do you immerse if you are not, Messiah, not the Messiah, nor Eliyahu, nor the prophet? Yochanan answered them, saying, I immerse in water, but in your midst stands one whom you do not know, the one coming after me, who has become before me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to loosen. This took place in Baith Anya, beyond the Yardane, where Yo Yochanan was immersing. On the next day, Yochanan saw Yeshua coming toward him and said, See the Lamb of Elohim who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who has become before me, before, for he was before me. And I did not know him, but that he might be revealed to Israel. Therefore I came immersing in water. And Yochanan bore witness, saying, I have seen the Spirit, the Ruach, coming down from heaven like a dove, and remain on him. And I did not know him, but he who sent me to immerse in water said to me, upon whom you see the Spirit coming down and remaining on him. This is he who immerses in the set-apart set spirit, in other words, the Ruach HaKodesh. And I have seen and have witnessed that this is the Son of Elohim. It's amazing how that went right over the top of heads of people and they didn't, they didn't catch on. The Messiah that they've been looking for for many, many years was in their midst. And Yochanan told them, hey, he's in our midst. And they still didn't get it. They didn't understand. Only a few caught on. A few that were truly watching and waiting. Again, the following day, Yochanan was standing with two of his taught ones. And looking at Yeshua walking, he said, see, the Lamb of Elohim. And the two taught ones heard him speaking, and they followed Yeshua. And Yeshua, turning and seeing them following, said to them, What do you seek? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, I love this phrase, he coined it here, Come and see. They went and saw where he was staying, 
and remained with him that day. Now it was about the tenth hour, that is, near four o'clock. Andre, the brother of Shimon Kepha, the one we call Peter, was one of the two who heard from Yochanan and followed him. First he found his own brother, Shimon, and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means the anointed. And that's what Messiah means in Greek is anointed. So I don't have any quarrels with that whatsoever. And he brought him to Yeshua. And looking at him, Yeshua said, You are Shimon, the son of Yonah. You shall be called Kepha, which means a stone. On the following day, Yeshua wished to go to Galil, and he found Philip and said to him, Follow me. And Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andre and uh, Kepha. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him whom Moshe wrote of in the Torah and the prophets, Yeshua of Nazareth, the son of Yosef. And Nathanael said to him, Is it possible for any good matter to come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. <laughs> Yeshua saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, See, truly a Yisraelite in whom is no deceit. That means uh, no trickery or no, no lies. Nathanael said to him, From where do you know me? Yeshua answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, you were under the fig tree. I saw you. Nathanael answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the son of Elohim. You are the sovereign of Israel." Yeshua answered and said to him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? Greater than that you shall see. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, from now on, you shall see the heaven opened and the messengers of Elohim ascending and descending upon the son of Adam. Um, this word, he says, truly, I, truly, I say to you. I looked that up and it's the Greek word, hymen, which is a personal pronoun, a second person plural. So the accurate translation would be to you, to all of you. He is not only speaking to Nathanael, he is speaking to all of his Talmudim, his disciples. He says, I say unto all of you, from now on you shall see the heaven opened and the messengers of Elohim ascending and descending upon the son of Adam. And I think we mentioned later in this study, son of Adam is Adam is one of the favorite choices of titles that Yeshua calls himself, son of Adam. Okay, chapter 2. We'll just take it right here. Okay. And on the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galil, and the mother of Yeshua was there. And both Yeshua and his taught ones were invited to the wedding. And when they were short of wine, the mothers of Yeshua said to him, They have no wine. Yeshua said to her, and he was not being disrespectful. Uh, when I was younger, I thought, well, this is a disrespectful way to say this. But he's not saying it this way. He's saying it in Hebrew, and he's saying it within the Hebrew realms of respect. Don't think that Yeshua would ever disrespect his mother or his earthly father, so to speak. And Yeshua said to her, Woman, what is that to me and to you? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, 
do whatever he says to you. <laughs> she, his mother, knew that there was a power of Yahweh in him. Therefore, she told them to do whatever he says. No doubt, from time to time, even when he was young, how miraculous things happened, and his mother just watched. Well, she knew that he was supposed to be the son of Elohim. And there were six stone water jugs standing there, according to the mode of cleansing of the Yehudim, each holding two or three measures. Yeshua said to them, Fill the water jugs, or fill the water jugs with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, Now draw out and take it to the master of the feast. So they drew out and they took it. When the master of the feast had tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew it was just water, <laughs> at least they thought it was just water, the master of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, Every man at the beginning sets out the good wine, and when they have drunk, then that which is poorer, you have kept the good wine until now. That was a commendation. <laughs> this is the beginning of the signs Yeshua did in Cana of Galil, and manifested his esteem, and his taught ones believed in him. After this, he went down to Kepharnechem, known as uh, Capernaum to us. That's what I called it all of my life when I was from the time I was very young. He and his mother and his brothers and his taught ones. And there they stayed not many days. And the Passover of the Yehudim was near, and Yeshua went up to Jerusalem. He was going to keep the Passover because that is instructed by Yahweh himself for us to keep his Moedim. His Moedim are important to him. It's an important time for him to spend with his children. Just like family get-togethers are important to us, this is a family get-together of Yahweh, of he and his children. So his Moedim always have been and always will be important. Are you a child of Elohim? <laughs> Maybe you should be keeping his Moedim. You pray about that. You pray seriously. And Yahweh will deal with you accordingly. He'll, uh, he'll let you know what's important and what's not important. And he found in the set-apart place those selling oxen and sheep and doves and the money changers sitting. And having made a whip of cords. Now, I... I see it like this. Now, I'm not I'm always like uh, we see it on TV. But when he saw those, it pricked his heart. Knowing that they were probably cheating people, probably with dishonest scales as well. We don't know what all was concerned. But we do know that he went and made a whip of cords. He made it. He drove them all out of the set-apart place with the sheep the, and the oxen and poured out the money changers' coins and overturned the tables. And he said to those selling doves, Take these away. Do not make my house, the house of my father, a house of merchandise. And his taught ones remembered that it is written. The ardor for your house has eaten me up. So Yeshua was eaten up with the ardor for Yahweh's house, the temple. And the Yehudim answered and said to him, What sign do you show us? Show to us since you are doing these. Yeshua answered and said to them, Destroy this dwelling place and in three days I shall raise it up. 
Then the Yehudim said, It took forty-six years to build this dwelling place, and you are going to raise it up in three days? But he spoke about the dwelling place of his body. He just didn't tell them that's what he was talking about, and he didn't care to. He didn't like them very much. So when he was raised from the dead, his taught ones remembered that he said this to them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Yeshua had said. And that he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, at the festival. Many believed in his name when they saw the signs which he was doing. But Yeshua was not entrusting himself to them because he knew all men and had no need that anyone should witness of man for he knew what was in man. He knew the depths of the heart of mankind, my friends. Okay, on to chapter 3. I miss every time I get to the end of a chapter. I want to look over into the chat, but the chat's not here because this is a remake. Uh, but anyway, uh, just know that I love you all and I hope everything is well and we can get back to chatting again next week along with a live stream that is not going in and out. Now, Abba will help me find a solution, find out what's going on with my internet so that I can be more um, effective in the ways that he wants me to be effective. Is that understandable? I hope so. Praise Abba. Okay. And there was a man of the Pharisees Nock Demon was his name, known to us as Nicodemus, but his name is actually Nock Demon, or Demon. And it's not like he was a demon, but anyway. He was a ruler of the Yehudim. This one came to Yeshua by night, because he won't be seen by others, and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from Elohim, for no one is able to do these signs you do if Elohim is not with him. Yeshua answered and said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born from above, he is unable to see the reign of Elohim. Nachdemon said to him, how is a man able to be born when he is old? Is he able to enter into his mother, mother's womb a second time and be born? He was thinking way too literally. Yeshua answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he is unable to enter into the reign of Elohim. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which has been born of spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you have to be born from above. The spirit breathes where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it. But you do not know where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who has been born of the spirit, the Ruach. Nachdemon said, answered and said to him, How is it possible for this to take place? Yeshua answered and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel and do not know this? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak, notice you saying we speak what we know and witness what we have seen and you do not receive our witness. And he spoke, he's speaking of we and our as he and Yahweh. If you do not believe when I spoke to you about earthly matters, how are you going to believe when I speak to you about heavenly matters? And no one has gone up into heaven except he who came down from heaven, the son of Adam. 
like I said before, this is Yeshua's favorite title for himself because the Hebrews knew exactly what he meant, that he was the son of Elohim. That's what it was suggesting every time he said it. And as Moshe lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the son of Adam has to be lifted up. He's speaking about when he is killed, when he becomes a sacrifice for all who believe in him, so that whoever is believing in him should not perish, but possess everlasting life. Praise Yahweh and praise our Adon Yeshua. And one of the most quoted verses in all of Scripture. For Elohim so loved the world that he gave his only brought forth son so that everyone who believes in him should not perish but possess everlasting life. For Elohim did not send his son into the world to judge the world, but, th but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not judged but he who, has, who does not believe is judged already because he has not believed in the name of the only brought forth Son of Elohim. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and men loved the darkness rather than the light, for their works were wicked. For everyone who is practicing evil matters hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his work should be exposed. Yeah, they don't want to come into the light because their works would be exposed. But the one thing, uh, but the one doing the truth comes to the light so that his works are clearly seen, that they have been wrought in Elohim. After this, Yeshua and his taught ones came into the land of Yehuda, and he remained there with them and was immersing, not him actually, but his, uh, his Talmudim were immersing. Yeshua was not immersing. And Yochanan was also immersing in uh, Ayin near Salem because there was plenty of water there and there were and they were coming and being immersed, for Yochanan had not yet been put into prison. Then a dispute arose between some of Yochanan's taught ones and the Yehudim about cleansing. And they came to Yochanan and said to him, Rabbi, he who was with you beyond the Ardain, to whom you have witnessed, see, he is immersing and all are coming to him. Maybe the crowd was shifting. It was getting more heavy toward uh, where Yeshua was, where his Talmudim were immersing. Yochanan answered and said, No man is able to receive any matter unless it is given to him from the heaven. Shamayah. You yourselves are witnesses for me that I have said, I am not the Messiah, but I am sent ahead of him. He that has the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly because of the voice of the bridegroom. So this joy of mine is complete. It is right for him to increase, but me to decrease. He who, who comes from above is over all. He who is from the earth is of the earth and speaks of the earth. He who comes from the heaven, the Shamayah, is over all. And what he has seen and heard, that he witnesses, and no one receives his witness. What a shame. He who receives his witnesses has set his seal that Elohim is true. For he whom Elohim has sent speaks the words of Elohim, for Elohim does not give the Spirit by measure. In other words, 
Yeshua was given an immeasurable amount of the Ruach HaKodesh. It was his very breath. The Father loves the Son and has given all into his hand. He who believes in the Son possesses everlasting life, but he who does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of Elohim remains on him. That is a very serious thing. It's a mistake that leads to death. Uh, chapter 4. So when the master, Yeshua, knew that the Pharisees had heard that Yeshua made and immersed more taught ones than Yochanan, although Yeshua himself did not immerse, but his taught ones, he left Yehuda and went away again to Galil, and he had to pass through Shomeron. So he came to a city of Shomeron called Shechem, and we have uh, fine memories of that, don't we? Uh, near the piece of land Yaakov gave to his son Yosef, and Yaakov's fountain was there, so Yeshua, being wearied from the journey, was sitting thus at the fountain. It was about the sixth hour. That means about noon. A woman of Shomeron came to draw water. Yeshua said to her, Give me to drink. For his taught ones had gone off to the, into the city to buy food. The woman of Shomeron therefore said to him, how is it that you, being a Yehudite, ask a drink from me, a woman of Shomeron? For Yehudim do not associate with Shomeronites. Yeshua answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of Elohim, and who it is who says to you, Give me to drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you to drink living water <laughs> the woman said to him master you have no vessel and the well is deep from where do you then do you have the living water are you greater than our father Yaakov who gave us the well and drank from it himself and his sons and his cattle Yeshua answered her and answered and said to her, Everyone drinking of this water shall thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water I give him shall certainly never thirst, and the water that I give him shall become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Now, Yeshua obviously knows that this woman is not going to understand what he's talking about. But she will in time. And that's why he's telling her now. She will in time understand what he's saying. Then the woman, the woman said to him, Master, give me this water, so that I do not thirst, nor come here to draw. Yeshua said to her, Go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Yeshua said to her, You have well said, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one whom you now have is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Master, I see that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you people say that in Jerusalem is the place where one needs to worship. Yeshua said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you shall neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know because the deliverance is of the Yehudim. 
but the hour is coming and now is. He, he says the hour is coming and the now is. The true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father also does seek such to worship Him. <laughs> now, can we know that this is a fact for today? The Father seeks such, those who worship in spirit and truth. He seeks such to worship Him. Absolutely it's true. There's nothing more true. Elohim is spirit, Ruach. And those who worship him need to worship in spirit, in Ruach. And truth. Of course, it's got to be the truth. But if Elohim is Ruach, what is the Ruach HaKodesh? The very breath of Elohim that goes out that goes forth from him and from his throne where he is seated. There's so much more than we can explain, so much deeper than we can possibly even know. We can't even imagine it. Yahweh is full of wonder, and I dare say I cannot come up with the words to explain or describe him and his being as Elohim, as Father, as Son, as Ruach. There are no words that accurately describe it, only the feeling, the Ruach inside, can help us to understand. <laughs> Praise Abba, Father. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, and the one who is called anointed. When that one comes, he shall announce to us all. Yeshua said to her, I who am speaking to you am he. <laughs> Why did he tell her? Why would he not tell the same to the scribes and the Pharisees that were trying to kill him? Well, they're, they're not trying yet, but later on in this book, they will. But he didn't tell them, I am the Messiah. But she said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, <laughs> the one who is called anointed. When that one comes, he shall announce to all of us. And he said, I who am speaking to you am he. And upon this, his taught ones came, and they were marveling that he was speaking with, the, with a woman. However, no one said, What do you seek, or why do you speak with her? The woman then left her water jug. Notice she left her water jug. I don't think she ever got him any water, so she, maybe she just left that up to him. She had something to tell, and she had something she wanted to tell and spread quickly. The woman left her water jug and went away to the city and said to the men, Come see a man who told me all that I have done. Is, not, is this not the Messiah? They, the men, went out of the city and were coming to him. But in the meantime, his taught ones were asking him, saying, Rabbi, eat. And he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. Then the taught ones said to each other, Did anyone bring him food to eat? <laughs> hey, Peter, did you bring him something? Did you give him a snack or something? <laughs> Yeshua said to them, my food, <clears throat> excuse me, my food is to do the desire of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Do you not say there are still four months and the harvest comes? 
See, I say to you, lift up your eyes and see the fields, for they are white for harvest already. He who is reaping receives a reward and gathers fruit for everlasting life, so that both he who is sowing and he who re is reaping rejoice together. Now, mind you, these guys can see the fields. They can see the wheat that's planted. And they know that it's not ripe. So they say, what is this he's talking about? He's talking about a harvest. He's talking about laboring for something that we yet do not understand. For in this the word is true. One sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap for that, uh, that for which you have not labored. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labors. And many of the Shomeronites of that city believed in him because of the word of the woman who witnessed. He told me all that I have done. Therefore, when the Shomerites came to him, they were asking him to stay with them. And he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. And they said to the woman, We no longer believe because of what you said. For we ourselves have heard. And we know that this is truly the Messiah, the Savior of the world. He came unto his own, and his own did not receive him. But others did receive him. Others that were looking for the truth, that were holding on to, to the truth, that were praying for the truth. Not all perfect people, sinners like the woman who had had five husbands and was just living with a man at that time. But I think when she met Messiah, it changed her life. She forgot about the things of the world. She even forgot about her own water jug. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, let me get the tears out of my eyes so I can read. Uh, you would think that if we weren't together having fellowship and with people praying for me, that the Ruach wouldn't be strong, but it's very strong during the reading that I'm doing because it's very dear to the heart of our Father, Yahuwah. And after the two days, he left there and went to Galil, where Yeshua himself witnessed that a prophet is without appreciation in his own country. Therefore, when he came to Galil, the Galileans received him having seen all that he had done in Jerusalem at the festival. For they also went to the festival, so they've seen him before at the festival. And they saw him probably cleaning up the temple, remember. Uh, they probably saw that and said, Oh, this man does not accept unrighteousness and cheating and unlawfulness. He must be something special. And he absolutely was and is. Then Yeshua came again to Cana of Galil, where he had made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Kepharnechom, again Capernaum. When he heard that Yeshua had come from Yehuda into Galil, he went to him and was asking him to come down and heal his son, for he was about to die. Yeshua then said to him, If you people do not see signs and wonders, you do not believe at all. The nobleman said to him, Master, come down before my child dies. Yeshua said to him, Go. Go. Your son lives. And the man believed the word that Yeshua spoke to him and went. <laughs> he believed that his son was going to be okay then. He believed because he'd heard about him. 
and he believed Yeshua. And sometimes you can have a feeling when somebody tells you something that ha tells you something with authority, you accept it. Uh, if somebody tells you something and they don't show any proof of authority, sometimes you don't believe it. But I think Yeshua said, go, your son lives. And while he was going down, his servants met him and reported, saying, Your son lives. He then asked them the hour in which he became better. And they said to him, Yesterday, at the seventh hour, that's about 1 p.m., the inflammation left him. Then the father knew that it was at the same hour in which Yeshua said to him, your son lives. And he himself believed. And all his household. <laughs> Imagine that. Oh, absolutely the mother believed. Absolutely the father believed. He knew that Yeshua said, Go, your son lives. Absolutely the son believed because he was sick, about to die. And suddenly he was okay. Again, this was the second sign Yeshua did when he had come from Yehuda into Galil. Well, praise Abba for uh, another opportunity to share his word. I'm grateful to each and every one of you. And um, out of habit <laughs> and out of desire, I end the same way that I always end our live streams. I end with the song of Moshe. Take it away, Alan. I sing to Yahuwah, for he is highly exalted. The horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea. Yah is my strength and song, and he has become my deliverance. He is my El, and I praise him, Elohim of my Father. And I exalt him. Yahuwah is a man of battle. Yahuwah is his name. He has cast Pharaoh's chariots and his army into the sea. And his chosen officers are drowned in the sea of reeds. The depths covered them. They went down to the bottom like a stone. Your right hand, O oh Yahuwah, has become great in power. Your right hand, O oh Yahuwah, has crushed the enemy. And in the greatness of your excellence, you pulled down those who rose up against you. You sent forth your wrath. It consumed them like stubble, and with the wind of your nostrils, the waters were heaped up. The floods stood like a wall, the depths became stiff. In the heart of the sea, the enemy said, I pursue, I overtake, I divide the spoil, my being is satisfied on them. I draw out my sword, my hand destroys them. You blew with your wind, the sea covered them, they sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you? Yahuwah among the mighty ones Who is 
like you, great in Kodesha, awesome in praises, working wonders. You stretched out your right hand, the earth swallowed them. In your kindness, you led the people whom you have redeemed. In your strength, you guided them to your Kodesh dwelling. Peoples heard, they trembled. Anguish gripped the inhabitants of Pelasheth. Then the chiefs of Edom were troubled, the mighty men of Moab. Trembling grips them, all the inhabitants of Canaan melted. Fear and dread fell on them by the greatness of your arm. They are as silent as a stone. Until your people pass over, O Yahuwah. Until the people whom you have bought pass over. You bring them in and plant them in the mountain of your inheritance. In the place, O Yahuwah which you have made for your own dwelling. The meek dash, O Yahuwah, which your hands have prepared. Yahuwah reigns forever and ever.